Hello Internet, welcome to NS2 Learning Tutorial Series. I've been wanting to do this tutorial for a long, long time. Uh, in this tutorial, we are going to discuss and talk about multimedia, multimedia traffic in NS2. Now, before I begin with the tutorial, uh, I, I'd like to talk something about MPEG4 traffic and the framework which we are going to use in order to simulate multimedia traffic in NS2. So if we talk about multimedia traffic, one of the most popular multimedia traffic is MPEG which has which has frames at presentation layers. So it becomes very important to analyze the traffic in terms of frame loss and number of decodable frames received at the receiver. Now MPEG4 uh, traffic or multimedia class is divided into I, P and B frames. Now I frames are the ones which contain the image information. So if we talk about the priority of the frames, I frames are placed at a higher priority than P frames and the least priority frames are the B frames. So when we talk about number of frames received at the receiver, we would want a higher threshold for higher frames and we could trade off with a lower threshold for B frames which are the least priority frames. You could look more about framing structure of MPEG traffic at, on the internet but uh, th that was the most basic thing that I wanted to discuss before I start the tutorial. And secondly, in order to simulate multimedia traffic in NS2, we need an external framework which is known as Evalvid. Now why is this framework important? NS2 is not designed to work with all the application layer protocols on the go. For more complicated protocols, uh, like HTTPS or multimedia traffic, we need we need to have an external framework that could support those application layer protocols in, in NS2. So what we have here is this framework Valvid is going to generate or it is going to facilitate us with two new agents, one at the source and one at the receiver. So at the source we would be able to attach new agent by the name of my underscore UDP and at the receiver side we would be able to attach a new agent my evaluate underscore send and they are going to generate some trace files uh, after the finishing of the simulation and evaluate is going to provide you with an EG program which is going to calculate packet or frame loss rate, the fraction of decodable frames with the help of these two trace files and with the help of a modified network trace file. So this is the basic block diagram of Evalvid. Uh, now in context to the program or the script file, how, how does it happen? Let's see practically. Uh, so I've got this TCL file. Now, please understand this file has been downloaded from uh, the small course link for multimedia uh, NS2 traffic simulations. Now in this particular TCL file, uh, we have the provision of entering a loss 
loss at the channels. So in other words, we can say a loss model is implemented into this TCL file. So during the run time, we, we will enter the amount of loss uh, that the channels would offer uh, in this network. And if you look at this part, so this guy has attached a new agent by the name of my underscore UDP and my evaluate underscore sync at the destination. So this this has been made possible only because of the evaluate framework already being implemented in NS2. I'll talk about I'll talk about evaluate framework in more detail in the coming tutorials. But for the time being I want to show you how a multimedia simulation is performed. If you have this uh, signal package from small go with you. Alright. Now I'm running that TCL file. Now oh, I'm sorry, I didn't go with that. Now the value that you see here, 0 0.2, is the value that you enter for the loss module. Now this value can vary from 0 to 1, and where 0 would represent a 0 error model and 1 would represent a completely erroneous channel. Now this simulation could take some time. And all right, you can see these three files are being generated right now. The data is still being written into these files, and we are going to be using these two files plus another file with the ET program to calculate the frame loss at presentation layer. Alright, now the simulation is done. The next instruction would be uh, to convert the information from dot dat file into dot st file which is a statistical file which is required by ET program to evaluate packet loss and frame loss. I'll be putting all all the instructions in the description and you could download this package from the link in the description. The idea here is to understand how I, P and B frames are different from each other and how evaluation of these frames separately is important. Alright. Alright, uh, I was talking about this instruction, ET.exe. This instruction is is a part of the evaluate framework and this instruction takes three different files as seen from um, the block diagram uh, this ET program is being fed we are, we are entering the information from a receiver trace file, sender trace file and a modified network trace file we, ju we just generated in the previous step and the output of this ET program is going to be packet and frame loss, the fraction of decodable frames. Alright, now, so this is the result, the packet sent 
time it lost, frame sent and frame lost. And the second part of the result is even more interesting because we have uh, total frames sent, decodable frames received and this is the fraction of decodable frames. So this is the segregation of IP and B frames uh, separately. So if, if we look at total directly decodable frames was 7445 uh, and the total frames sent were 7500 so we can find out the percentage also. So that was it. Uh, you could find the link for all these uh, script files in the description below. I hope this introductory session was helpful and thank you so much for watching this video. Have a very good day. Bye-bye.